In today's Abandoned video, we are covering a massive abandoned RAF base located near the coast of eastern England. The airfield opened before World War II and lasted until the mid-1990s when it closed down. Most of the 25 plus buildings on site lay abandoned today, with considerable decay inside. Join us as we venture into the many structures to see what remains. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. Last week we asked the question, should we explore abandoned industrial places that are huge but empty? We had many replies but this one by Keith stood out to us. He said that empty pieces of industry don't tell the same story that those of machines do and we would agree. Although in our own time we have explored factories with nothing inside, it doesn't captivate us enough to film a thorough video on location. In relation to this week's video, we are asking would you like to see more post-war abandonments? Be sure to comment your answers below to possibly feature in our next upload. With more than enough abandoned buildings to find at the RAF base, we had to choose a select few that appealed to us more than the others. Firstly, we started the morning at the officers' mess, which we expected to be the grandest building across the grounds. This property was an area for military members to socialise, eat and sleep during long periods of work. In no time we had found a way into the noticeably deteriorating site that would become a common theme of the structures here. Some really nice decay in this building. I'm also expecting some interesting architecture. This looks like kitchens. There is so many twigs. I have no idea why. Wow. This is a nice room with the glass panelled ceiling and the decay. It looks like they've boarded up some of the windows but the natural light coming in here is really good. There's a piano too shows that this was like a main hall, probably a dining room and they'd have events in here. This one dates back to 1795. I'm surprised it still works to be honest. Although a lot of the keys are too stiff to make a sound. Although the officer's mess was completely stripped of any furnishings, it still offered some simplistic design that gave it a grand aesthetic. It consisted of multiple mess halls running down the longest corridor, with two accommodation blocks attached to either end. 
I love the huge double doors that take you into these halls. The architecture isn't too special, but it's still nice enough. This looks like an entrance, yeah. It's great that the chandeliers are still intact. This bar is in a lot worse condition. The cushioned seats are still here though. I believe this is the one that from the outside it looks a bit like a, an air raid shelter. Probably get some cinematics of it to show you and you'll recognise it. It has like an arch. But in here there's a drop down ceiling so the arch isn't really visible. A Royal Air Force themed carpet would take inhabitants up to the accommodation floor. Some creaky stairs. This is accommodation from what I believe for the officers. Yeah, it's just gonna be same looking rooms. They're quite large though. All the remains of the cupboard. This block is very repetitive, so I think it's time we find a new building. We've covered all the main points here. The airbase was constructed in the late 1930s prior to the war with a grass landing strip. This was adjusted during the war to make them concrete runways that both stretched over a kilometre in length. It was equipped with all the necessities for long stays on site such as housing for 2,000 men and 500 women, an airman's restaurant, station headquarters, various mess halls, a medical block, gym, control tower, hangars and two water towers. During the Second World War, this base was used by RAF Bomber Command from 1940, with the loss of 86 aircraft being mostly Blenheims as well as Mosquitoes and Bristol Bowfighters. After the war, it was the location for the Royal Observer Corps' annual summer training camps for five years. Next up, we targeted the gymnasium, which was positioned in the busier parts of the site. Wow, this is a really nice gym. I can't tell if those are yellow ceiling tiles or that's just where the water has made it damp. The spacious gym would have been a popular recreational area for military personnel. Photographs of sports related activities are still hung up on the walls. There's much more decay in here than you'd think from the outside. These are just changing rooms. I like the tiles. It's a lot of empty back rooms from the gym. Oh wow, look at the decay in this bit. There's ferns growing on the walls and ceiling. Holy shit. This is like a jungle in here.
It was strange that this part of the building had allowed so much foliage to grow, but it is probably explained by a less kept ceiling or missing roof tiles. Either way we weren't complaining with scenes like this. Moving onwards, we headed to the opposite part of the RAF base, which consists of accommodation blocks mainly, as well as a lot of sheep. It seems that recently farmers are allowing their livestock to stay in the neglected fields of the facility. The buildings have remained the same type for over 80 years, except for accommodation houses that were sold to the public post-closure. Now a small amount of the structures are in use as it is being transformed into a business park. This Greek reflecting structure is the Airman's Restaurant, and it interested us as we wandered past. This is to stop the sheep getting in. As far as I'm aware, this building was a restaurant um, in relation to the RAF base, obviously. These definitely are kitchens, and big ones at that, because they needed to serve a lot of people here. Coming out of the kitchens into a huge empty space. This would definitely be a seating area. Sucks that none of the furniture's here today, but it's still quite nice. I like the fact that in a lot of these buildings the curtains are all left. Great natural light was being let into the restaurant by the unblocked windows. Again, minimal natural decay was taking place, which is our favourite to see. This is a really nice staircase. The banister's very art deco. expect anything else apart from empty rooms. The architecture in here is some of my favourite across the whole site though. It's very simplistic but really detailed. After the short visit to this building, we only had one left that we really wanted to see. You might be thinking that we are leaving so many properties unexplored, but we decided to stop the video from getting repetitive. All of the structures on site are empty and the architecture of many, especially the accommodation blocks, is identical each time. The only others that we would want to see, such as the control tower and hangars, are sadly sealed tight. Our final goal was to reach the summit of one of the two water towers of the airfield. It would give us a spectacular view of the derelict land before us. Before that we decided to check out the small bit of industry that is left, being the machines underneath the tower. It's one of the few industry sections of this place. Oh, it looks nice in here. Some nice gauges on the wall. And a row of pumps, they look like. Especially with big pipes coming out of the back of them. There wasn't a great deal to see, so it was time to begin the ascent of the very rusty ladder that ran from ground to roof.
it didn't take us long to reach the peak, particularly because we wanted to escape the pigeon dropping filled lift space. Rewardingly, the views in the sunshine were amazing. A memorial was placed in the active part of the base a few years ago that signifies the pride the military showed in their country during the war that resulted in lives tragically lost. It is uncertain what will happen to the majority of the buildings but quite a hopeful transformation occurred on the runways. Hundreds of solar panels have been positioned instead which makes the abandoned base a super renewable energy source. We hope you enjoyed joining us in a different type of exploration video. There are more of these bases that lie abandoned, so if you would like to see us visit them, let us know in the comments. Here are some of our photographs we captured at the abandoned RAF base. If you like the look of them, feel free to check out our Instagram page in the description where we post images of our explores months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to never miss a future upload. See you next time.